Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring it on to bite-sized pieces. So today I want to do something a little bit different. We're going to go over what's going on in the market and I'm going to try to correlate that with what is going on with the stories to see if things actually match up. So first, this is what's going on in the market right now. Everything's down just a little bit, uh, but not too much. So we're going to talk about what's going on with uh, Cardano, take a look at Polkadot BTC or Wrap BTC. Chainlink and, and their new partnerships that are happening, Theta Mainnet 3.0 launch, and the Voyager uh, conference call for all their shareholders. And surprise, surprise, they are almost quadrupled their assets under management. So we'll get into all that, but first, let's take a look at the market. So today it is, gosh, what is it? March 2nd, it's high noon, Houston, Texas time. And uh, that's why things look a little bit different because we're in the, uh, the Houston home, uh, just doing wrapping up some things and all that good stuff. So Bitcoin, down a little bit. Uh, what are we? 47 below 48,000. So, why is that? Well, like we talked about in this ch channel, you have to understand that people like to take profits at round numbers 45,000, 48,000, 50,000. It seems like the bigger the rounder number, the more they take profits. So, 50,000 has been a little bit of a resistance because people like to take profits at that. They have their um, limit orders set. So, just so you know, once we have 50,000, we can bounce above that and maintain, things should do pretty well. But that I think is what is going on. And people will say, you know, dumping and manipulation. Sure. But again, as an investor, not as a trader, uh, just have to look at that and go, what's changed with Bitcoin? Nothing. Ethereum down a little bit. Um, but they've had, they're having a lot of problems with the deals, um, with the prices of gas fees. And this has been plaguing them for quite a long time. Now, you know, Ethereum 2.0, hopefully you can get uh, legs under it and kind of move forward, but uh, it's a ways away. I think that's why Cardano is right at its heels, and that's why it slipped in that third spot. So Cardano, I'm not going to play the video, but it's it's fantastic. I, I'm going to link it at the very end. It's two and a half minutes, and this talks about, you know, this merry hard fork and what's going on. And it has a nice little graphical representation of, hey, we're going to do decentralized finance. We're going to do smart contracts, native assets, and it's going to be good. And this is what's going on with Cardano. Uh, we covered this a couple of uh, videos ago, but again, watch this two and a half minute uh, video. It really gives you just a little bit greater detail and simplifies everything. All right, so then that's Cardano, Binance Coin, down a little bit. That had rocketed up because of the Binance chain and people were able to do decentralized exchanges uh, instead of using uh, Ethereum, uh, Uniswap, and all those things. Now I can use Binance Coin for their decentralized and swap for tokens. So of course it's going to go up uh, meteorically, but it's going to fall a little bit. But Binance Coin was below 100 bucks and just in like a week or so above 236. I think it almost touched 300. Tether's Tether doing pretty good after that um, settlement with uh, the New York Attorney General. So we'll see how that works out. Polka Dot um, up a little bit uh, over 24 hours, but down, which. It's kind of odd because if you took a look at Polkadot in their Twitter feed, they talked about how they're launching Polka BTC, which, what is that? Well, it's kind of like wrapping Ethereum. What's Polka BTC? Uh, it's the trustless Bitcoin Polkadot bridge, allows users to mint one to one Bitcoin backed assets on a Polkadot and use it across a wide range of apps, including decentralized exchanges. So, Polkadot is doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is interoperability. And that is great if you want to do some type of swaps. So, now you have Binance Coin as far as Ethereum as well. Now you have Polka BTC wrapping it, using it for decentralized exchanges. That's great news. So let's see what else we got. Uh, XRP down a little bit. Hey, hopefully they can come to a conclusion with the SEC lawsuit. I think they might be, uh, I, I'm not even going to even speculate. I can't even say they're close or whatever else because I've been through lawsuits and they drag on forever. So sorry, that's what it is. Chainlink is up. Hey, look at that. 8% uh, for. 24 hours, uh, half a point in the last hour. What's going on here? Well, for Chainlink, as reported by their channel, they're doing two things. First of all, they're integrating with Fuse. Fuse is uh, looking to make um, payments better, better than Venmo um, between peer-to-peer -peer people. Great. And of course, they're going to use Chainlink so it can uh, trigger the USD minting when USDC is locked in Ethereum and provides up-to-date reference data on collateralization. So instead of just having it like Tether, just kind of like up in the air, like, yeah, you know, we're backed by this, Chainlink is going to verify. Don't trust verify, right? And then down here was pretty cool. They also had a synthetic asset platform Jarvis. 
is using Chainlink for price feeds on mainnet to secure the minting and exchange of synthetic tokens. So again, using uh, Chainlink to actually have utility. And you know on this channel, I'm big on if, if a token has utility and actually has a use case, probably do pretty well. What else we got? So we got Chainlink, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, what is it? USD, that's nah, just a stable coin, Uniswap. NEM is up 11%, and this was actually one of our picks for yesterday for Trinity Trading. Just on the sentiment alone, and just so you can see this, let me just do this so you can actually see it. So with Trade the Chain, I like what I like about it is that I can, and we had Alex do it, and he kind of demoed the whole thing for us yesterday. I'll link the video at the very end. You can go up here, do a projected range, and with 90% accuracy, I don't know what this is. Red coin, sure. Uh, 2%, it's going to go up. Uh, with, there's a 90% assurance and all the way up to 15%. That's huge. Beta token, we're going to talk about a little bit. It's either going to go uh, up about 2% or 5% in the next hour. Curve, same thing. Komodo, NEM is going to go up. So again, I don't really know in detail these projects. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying this is what Trade the Chain with sentiment analysis is actually showing us. So to jump back, we'll just talk about the other two things actually. So the reason why theta is going up, I believe, is because of this. Let me just switch it over. So there's a theta mainnet 3.0 launch. If you don't know theta, it's one of my holds. And just so you know, super biased on this channel. I usually talk about the things that I invest in, just how it is. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I talk about other things, but uh, usually these types of things. So theta is one of my big holds because what are you doing right now? You are watching me talk about cryptocurrency. What do a lot of you, maybe you, you yourself watch this video, do you work from home? Do you watch a lot of YouTube videos? Do you do a lot of streaming? Well, that's what Theta is here to solve. They are putting the um, unused bandwidth that are being used by all the uh, stakes and nodes, and they can actually use that to incorporate that into what people actually use. So. Instead of competing with YouTube, they are working actually in conjunction with them to make streaming better. And actually, uh, one of their advisors is uh, Mr. Chen, who is also the uh, creator of YouTube. So this is why I like Theta very much. So Theta Mainnet 3.0 launches in April. So we'll see how that works out. I've actually staked on Theta with my Guardian node. You don't need 10,000 tokens like you used to. Now it's only 1,000 and you can earn TFUL. So there's a there's a video over at danteacherscrypto.com, 100% free education website on cryptocurrency. Check that out. It's in module five, how do I? So we have that. And the last piece I want to talk about, and this was interesting, the earnings call for the shareholders for Voyager. Just so you know, Voyager, uh, the uh, broker app, uh, it is a publicly traded company, so they have to report at the SEC and also do shareholders, uh, you know, earnings reports. This is what came out yesterday. This is pretty big. The preliminary revenue went from December to February, 1.7 million to 20 million. You had a pretty much a 10x or 12x somewhere around there. Net deposits went from 28 million to 400 million. Asset center management, this is the big one, went from 230 million to 1.7 billion asset center management. Trades per day, new funded accounts, new verified users, principal value traded, all up, 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 up. So um, again, as Voyager, the company takes off, Voyager, the token will also take it off because it has utility. Once they release the Voyager loyalty program, which I think is 30 or 45 days from now, you're gonna see um, a massive gain. I was the one uh, that talked about Voyager on January 7th, the VGX token, it was 29 cents. I, my prediction was it's going to go to 30. It was the most outlandish prediction I've ever given. I'm pretty reserved and conservative. I think Bitcoin's only going to 150,000. I thought uh, Ethereum was only going up a little bit. Uniswap, I was actually wrong. I thought it was only going to 20 bucks, and it's you know way past that already. Um, but this one, you know, I think that it's going to go to 30 bucks because the utility. Look at Binance token. Look at Huobi token. Look at OKX. Look at Swiss Borg. Those have gone up exponentially because they have utility and people actually use them. When the Voyager loyalty program comes out, 7% staking. Also, it's going to be able to be used for uh, crypto to stock purchases. So I don't see how this one could fail. And who knows? I could be wrong. But again, not financial advice. That's what's going on in the market in a nutshell. And then let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, I know there's a lot of different uh, things going on, but again, when you look at these types of assets, just think to yourself, 
Is it going down because there's been a fundamental shift or is it just because the whims of the market, the news cycles and what's going on behind the scenes? Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last piece, I just wanna talk about, uh, this was a complete US uh, tax guide. If you are not from the United States, uh, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. You can, you can still hang out, that's fine. But it's only for US taxes and there's just two things I wanted to go over. One was what is considered a taxable event and the other one is what would you do if you get a airdrop, would you be taxed? So the first one is this. The one right here where it says receiving cryptocurrency from an airdrop or any crypto interest earnings from DeFi or decentralized finance lending. So if you take a look at that and you say to yourself, well, shoot, I mean, what's going to happen? Am I going to be taxed for that? Like right when it actually comes in because these are taxable events. And the answer is right when it comes in is when you're going to have that taxable event. So, But, but the bigger question is, is what happens to those airdrops? as they appreciate or depreciate in value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, Sheehan come in and answer this question on top of, uh, there's some more down here. And this is a great example where they, they talk about if you're uh, offsetting crypto for uh, other taxable events. Uh, and the other one was, oh, this one. Losses, losses from exchange hacks or theft. I was under the impression that if you got screwed out of your money by some hacker, it was gone and you couldn't write it off, but that's not the case. And then also, as you know, on my channel, you know that I lost uh, 20,000 ADA because during the testnet days, I wrote the uh, mnemonic phrase down on some scrap piece of paper somewhere that I had, I thought I had it all together and it just disappeared. So that's why I'm always recommending that uh, stone book, link in the description, obviously. But uh, I thought it was just gone. And then Sheehan's gonna talk to us about uh, regular losses versus abandonment. So let's just jump in and have him talk to us about this article about what we can actually do and not do. All right, everybody. So we just talked about that article, uh, kind of scary stuff. And so there were some things that were kind of confusing. So of course, I don't have all the answers. So. I brought in uh, Sheehan Chandra Sakara. He is a uh, certified CPA and he is, specializes in cryptocurrencies and digital assets as they pertain to taxes. So Sheehan, hey man, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, my, you're like my go-to guy for all these questions because I'm like, I don't, know what, I don't know what's going on. So let's, <laughs> okay. let's, let's just jump into it. Those, there's like three questions I have for you and we might have to delve into a little bit more. So let me share my screen right quick. And we'll go back to the article. So, bah, 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 bah. Uh, there was so in the very beginning here, it talks about you know there's there's certain um, parts or time references when things actually get taxed, and a couple of those confused me. The, the two were receiving cryptocurrency from an airdrop, and any any crypto interest earned from DeFi. So, Sheehan, the question is, do I have to pay like uh, as soon as those airdrops hit, or can I wait for a couple of years and then pay taxes, <laughs> or, or how does it, how does this all work? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this question about airdrop, like it's it's kind of counterintuitive to a lot of people. Like unlike if unlike the, uh, unless they're working like taxes like us. Yeah. So the rule is that you know if you're getting anything free, like especially like a token, uh -huh. you had to pay ordinary income taxes at the time you received that token into your wallet. So last year we had a couple of, you know, big airdrops, you know, uni airdrop was huge. Um, yeah. And then the spark airdrop, which is, I think it's still in progress. So right. the, the rule is that in, as soon as you get those tokens, you got to figure out the value and that value is taxed as order income. And the other question that people ask is, okay, I receive a token, let's say at $10 and tomorrow it goes down to $2. Uh, can I write it off? No, you cannot because you know un until you sell that token for two dollars, you cannot write off that eight dollar difference as a loss. So, yeah, unfortunately, you got to pay taxes at the time you receive it. Um, and then, if the on the subsequent day, if the price goes down, there's no tax write off. Uh, and if the price goes up, you could sell it, and you would pay capital gain taxes on the difference between the sales price and and the the price uh, it had at the time it hit your wallet. Here's a perfect example. Uniswap was last year. And I remember receiving that. I thought it was awesome. And then it went up from $4 to, let's say it went up to, it doubled $8. I, yeah. I always forget. 
So let's say on December 31st, it was at $8 for 2020. So for 2020, am I going to owe the $4 or $8? Because I never sold it. I just kind of let it, I, I still have it actually. I, I'll probably never, I'm not never, but I'll probably won't sell it for a long time. Yeah. So you just had to pay taxes on uh, that $4 multiplied by how many, you know, whatever the tokens you got. Okay. So it's yeah. like, as soon as it hits the wallet, whatever that, that, uh, that price is, unless you sell it. Okay. So yeah. Spark is not going to work worth too much in, in the beginning. I think I should be okay. All right. So that is that part. Thanks my man for answering that. Then there's a couple more and let's see. Oh, so the uh, example here, which is pretty good. So uh, Bob has, Bob has stocks in crypto. His stocks go uh, to 10,000 for, for a gain, but he loses 14,000. So uh, of course that would offset the total capital gains loss for the stocks. And he's got 4,000 left over. Uh, on his personal taxes, he can deduct uh, up to three thousand dollars, and then that that one thousand carries over. Does that one thousand carry over just for that year, or can it go to infinity, at, you know, at, as long as he wants? It, it goes to infinity. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Great, because I got a ton of losses for all the stupidity that I did back in the day. So great, I'm good with that. And then, uh, and actually, th this actually is one of the things I did with XRP. I had a huge loss. I sold them all, and then I bought them right back because this is because crypto is not uh it, it's not a security yet uh and then of course it is um it will be considered property correct yeah correct yes fantastic <laughs> and and this this is the big one and this is the one that gets really tricky i think for everybody even you so i was under the assumption that if i lose crypto or it gets hacked that i could not claim it as a loss because there was a change to the federal law and you could only do it if it was in a federally declared disaster area. So, but now it sounds like you can actually claim it as a loss. So tell us about claiming it as a loss versus uh, abandonment versus personal and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, in the eyes of the IRAs, you know, there are different types of losses. I mean, for us, everything is a loss, but for the IRS, <laughs> there are different types yes. of losses. And knowing those types are important because those different types of losses have different ways of reporting it, different requirements that you need to meet to deduct them. Okay. So, uh, you know, before 2017, if you, uh, you know, if you, you know, lost something, you, your property or, or something else, you could have taken that loss as a casualty loss because it was sudden and you didn't expect that. It, and, you know, it's just a casualty yeah. loss. Yeah, right. And in 2017, after the TCNJ Act, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, uh, that changed. So the IRS said, you can only take a casualty loss if, you, if it's related to a federally declared disaster area. And it's really hard to attribute like losing crypto to a federally you know, declared disaster area. Um, so a lot of people couldn't take that deduction. And, and as a matter of fact, that, that federally decided the, the casualty loss those are for like, you know, if your house get damaged by, you know, hurricane and stuff like that. I, I, so. I think I, I think I know why they did it is because they consider crypto property. So probably the people that wrote the law were just like, oh, it's property. So we'll just roll it into that, even though it's not physical property. Right. I mean, I, I, I think that's one of the mentality. And that's that's the whole thing with these uh, these people in power that actually uh, pass the bills. They need to know a little bit more about what's going on. I think yeah. that, that's just an assumption. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know, uh, but there's a, there's a possibility. So anyway, uh, but again, I, as I mentioned before, so there's other ways that you can take some of these, you know, crypto scam and exit losses. So those fall into two categories. It could be a, either investment loss or abandonment loss. Okay. Uh, so in the article, it's saying that you it could be treated as an investment loss, but if you look at the you know the definitions and details, mm -hmm. uh, to be to claim an investment loss, like you had to give up, time, you know, you had to transfer property to somebody else and you had to get something in return. Right. Um, in a typical investment loss, like, you know, you, let's say you have, you know, thousand bucks worth of crypto and then you're just giving it to somebody and it's, it's, it's just value is like pretty much useless. It's like one dollar that, that, that would be an investment loss because you're getting something back. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's an exchange of, of, of two things. Uh, and the, and then the third thing, again, this is, I'm a proponent of like, in, let's say like you, you, you lost your ledger or something like that. You could treat it as an abandonment loss because, you know, that mm -hmm. asset 
any value, you have abandoned it. Again, just don't go by my word. You, know, you need to talk to your CPA because it depends on the facts and circumstances. You know, you need to meet certain criteria to actually create, not a create, actually meet the criteria of claiming an abandonment loss. Mm -hmm. And there's additional tax forms to be filed. Right. Uh, but the, the summary is that, yes, in depending on the case, you might be able to get some type of tax relief if you lose your crypto uh, through a scam or you, if you go to like exit scam or you know, they get stolen or stuff like that. Right. So I so a couple of things to unpack here. First of all, these are these are laws that were just put in place not too long ago. So it is open to interpretation. So obviously you have to check with your CPA to make sure that you guys and gals are comfortable with how you are filing your taxes because we can't uh, say you should definitely do it like this because it is so new. And of course, everybody's circumstance is different. So make sure that you check with your CPA. Uh, another thing is if you don't have a CPA, uh, my man Sheehan here is, is open for, for business. I will link his information in the description below. You can talk to him about these things as he is a CPA and also uh, has delved extensively into crypto. But the thing that uh, was interesting to me was that, was that this, when you talk about abandonment and losing things. So as everybody on the channel knows, I lost 20,000 ADA. Why did I lose it? Because I was careless and I had uh, my mnemonic phrases from the test net and it's somewhere in one of these houses, I have no idea, or probably in the trash, I have no idea. So I've lost that. So if we're talking about this, I'm gonna talk with my CPA and talk if we can claim it as a abandonment and go that route. So we'll go from there. All right. So, yeah. So again, Sheehan, thanks for coming on. There's a couple, couple more things. Uh, as we all know, first of all, is that the things that we just talked about are only for the United States citizens throughout the entire globe. I, we don't know what your tax regulations are. So check with your local jurisdictions, check with your uh, tax attorney or tax professional to see what they recommend. But just so you know, uh, the IRS, this is one of those years that they're going to transfer over. As we heat up, so does the IRS. And they're transitioning from education to enforcement. And this is, this is from a former uh, division chief of the IRS. On top of that, there's also, uh, they pushed this nice little question to the very forefront of the 1040. If at any time, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency? And they leave that open to interpretation. And lastly, just so you know, uh, one of our subscribers, actually a couple have already been audited and uh, they're going through a 2018 audit because of my Coinbase 1099K form they used. So just so you know, if you didn't talk about that before, just know that this could actually happen again as Coinbase or your exchange actually starts to uh, file things late. So that is what is going on. All right, so uh, that is it. Uh, Sheehan, thanks for uh, coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, let's uh, jump back. All right, so I hope that helped. Uh, as promised, here is Sheehan's information. You can find that in the link in the description. Go ahead and hit him up for any questions that you might have. And then also, we're going to be doing a live AMA uh, in two days. Today is Tuesday. We're doing this on Thursday, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. So any tax questions that you possibly have, come on, hit us up, and we'll answer. And it, well, really, anything else you want to uh, for us to answer, we'll, we'll do our best. So that's Sheehan's information on top of if you are looking for a program to use to calculate all your tax uh, gains and losses, this is one that I've used for the last two years. CryptoTrader.tax works out fantastic. This is my second year using it. From the time that I actually put all the information in, sent them over to my uh, CPA, it took me 30 minutes. Very easy, saved me a lot of time and money and heartache. So uh, there's two ways you can do things. In the link in the description, you can find this uh, site where it's uh, they're going to do an enter to win for a $300 value unlimited tax report. Just put your first name and email, enter to win, great. Or if you don't want to wait and say, well, I don't think I'm going to win that much. Uh, in the link in the description, all viewers of Dan get 20% off for CryptoTrader.tax. And uh, that is it. So if you've made this far, I just want to say thanks so much for watching the entire video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That always helps uh, the channel tremendously. Also consider subscribing because a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially with the news stories we just talked about. And that is all. I'll link the other two videos we talked about previously. Uh, after this video, I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that is it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.